Hey church, great to see you all. This is a midweek pastoral message. As you can see, my uh, facial hair is growing. Somebody suggested that I should keep growing it until we finally through this thing. However, uh, I suspect it will reach my waist by the time this whole deal is really done. It's been an interesting season for us as a church. Uh, we had a good congregational conversation last night. It was just an opportunity for us as leaders to engage with the church, uh, present um, some of the finances and talk a little bit about strategy over the next season. As you will have no doubt heard, there was an announcement by the president uh, last night around um, how religious organizations are allowed to meet over this next season. Um, whilst we have always been able to meet up to 50 people for, for the purposes of funerals, that has been expanded slightly in a decision that we're not convinced is the right decision at this particular point in time. And so uh, in some discussions today amongst the leadership team, we have decided that at least for the foreseeable future, we will not be gathering together to meet as a church. Um, we just believe at this point that it's an unjustifiable risk to those who are vulnerable. I know that for some of you, especially those who have been alone during the season, this is going to be a particularly difficult decision. Um, we will be engaging with you and looking at how we can possibly uh, connect with you more deeply over the season. You are feeling isolated and disengaged from the body of Christ. And I think all of us long to gather together as a church again to be able to sing and to pray and to praise together. And we, we long for the day when that will be a reality. Um, obviously, there's new information uh, being uh, presented by the government on a regular basis. We believe there's another um, bit of information due tomorrow. And so we will constantly be reassessing what our response looks like over this next season. Uh, for me, I think it, it, I'm certainly I'm missing church. I'm missing the, the live dynamic. Uh, I don't enjoy being behind a camera. I enjoy even less so listening to myself, um, which I have to do uh, most Sundays. But um, the, the reality is at this point in time, we want to take care of our congregation and we believe take care of others. And for me, the greatest tragedy would be that we meet, um, which would be very difficult to do with only 50 people at, at a service. But the reality is that chances are that we may become a hotspot and that for me would be, would be the great tragedy. It's also an exciting opportunity to be reminded that Sunday is not church. I mean, it's the, the place where the church gathers. It's the place where the church comes to be fed. Um, but this is an opportunity for us to be the church. And so again, just really want to encourage you to use all of your contacts, use your social media platforms. Uh, let's push out there the phenomenal um, material that our team is producing each and every week. And let's get it out there into the hands of those who do not yet follow Christ and call him Lord and Savior and King. This is just a brilliant, brilliant season to be able to do some stuff uh, that we've never been able to do before. Let's keep uh, in prayer. Uh, let's keep our eyes focused on Jesus himself. Uh, keep encouraging each other in your homes. Parents, encourage your children. Children, encourage your parents, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives. Let's encourage each other to remain close to the Lord and to be his people in this world in this season. I really believe that God listens to the prayers of his people. We, we want to see him act in this world. Um, but until he does, we want to remain steadfast in our faith and steadfast in finding alternative ways to express our faith and to live out the gospel in our community. Um, I'm going to hand over to Carl, one of our elders, who's going to talk a little bit about some discipleship things. We, we want to each week in our pastoral message um, help you think about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And so we've tasked a whole bunch of our leaders to express something of where they're at and what we believe is important for us as a church to be thinking about, reflecting on and acting in over this next season. Um, may you be blessed. May you know the presence of Jesus. May you know the power of his Holy Spirit. May you be reminded that God is a good and powerful heavenly Father over this season. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all now. Let me hand over to Carl. Have a great week and we'll touch sides on Sundays. Hi church. As we continue on the rhythms of discipleship, I'd like to share on fellowship. Now, as an introvert, it's not always easy for me to engage and to seek others. It is actually quite difficult for me during the busyness of life. But the life of Jesus showed us how important connections are, and he gave us the commandment to love one another. Fellowship is the connection that believers have, because although we may come from different backgrounds and different cultures, our heart beats with one rhythm, because there is one that unites us, Jesus like to say some scripture Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19 and 22 so then you are no longer strangers and aliens but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God
In him, you are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. So this is why when we come together in Christ, as life groups, connect groups, or when we serve the body, we feel more connected. We feel the beauty of being connected together in the family called the church. As we meet together, we become a place where the Spirit of God dwells. The ancients believed that we required temples where heaven and earth met. The gospel tells us that it is in the people of God that heaven comes to earth. So in this season of COVID-19, it has been and it remains challenging to stay connected. But through the grace of God, we've got technology. We can laugh, share, cry and just share our overall experience together over the internet. We are apart, but we are not alone. This is a great season to open the doors of the real church, doing church virtually. Invite a friend to one of your life group meetings and let them see the church of Jesus be the church. Ordinary people doing life together.